Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. I've got iced coffee again. And thanks to Roger, I now know that I twist my top nine times to get it out. So thanks for filling me in on that, Roger. Kind of funny, I've never thought about that. I thought, how consistent am I? That's kind of scary. But the inconsistency, today it's iced coffee again. Doesn't that sound refreshing? It is, it's gonna be pretty great. It's hot out. It's absolutely beautiful though. It's not deadly hot, it's just lovely hot. Then I like sunshine and I like sunshine in the city here. It's beautiful and I like it when it's not deadly hot. So it's kind of just delightful right now. How are you all doing? Are you cold? Are you in the southern hemisphere? Are you hot? Are you mild? You know, how is it in your environment? Take a moment, introduce yourself, say hello. If you are a tulip, add your tulip. If you're a first timer, let us know. And then all of you on Facebook and all of you on YouTube, get to know each other. Start interacting. By introducing yourself and saying where you're from, you might discover you have a neighbor that you didn't even know. And then housekeeping, if you're on your phone, turn it sideways for bigger. If you're on your computer, you can go full screen. If you're on your TV, it's already too big, but you've got choices. Today, we're talking about the creative entrepreneur part two. If you were with us last week, you know we had a little bit of a glitch on YouTube. Today, we're everywhere, so that's better. In the studio, we've got Ricky on tech. We have Hitomi, who is watching both Facebook and YouTube. And we have teacher Carolyn with us this week, also watching Facebook and YouTube. Online, virtually, we've got Caledonia on Facebook. Susie on YouTube, David is with us, and I'm not sure about teacher Michelle. She's actually on vacation, so she may be watching from afar, but I hope she's just kind of enjoying herself. She'll be back next week, so we'll get to see her. And then we have you. So let's get on to Creative Entrepreneur Part 2. In Part 1, we talked about how to get started, doing your research, preparing, making it real, getting it started, connecting, and then starting where you are. And I started just kind of alluding to pacing yourself and thinking about how to make it be fun. So today, that's where we're going to pick up. And we're going to talk about how to stay motivated, how to grow your business, how to avoid burnout. And if you think way back to one of my past lives, we talked about there are different stages in your floral journey. You could be a bud, just beginning. You could be a bloom, so you're established and you are blossoming out. Or you could be at the seed stage where you've been there, done that, you're kind of tired, and you're ready to think about what's next. And at all those stages, the bud, the bloom, and the seed can be wonderful and they each have their own needs and requirements. And so that's what we're gonna look at. We're gonna start with the bud. So you have decided you wanna be a creative entrepreneur. You've done your research, you've got your education, you've prepared, and you made it real. You've got your business license, you've got your business cards, you've got everything underway. Then what do you do? And I thought while I did that, I would think about something we would teach at the very beginning of flower school a centerpiece, an oval, all sided. I'm going to do a little more contemporary by going old school with floral netting. It's funny that we say it's contemporary when this was back before foam, so it's really old, old school, uh, but giving it a fresh vibe. And then I've already taped it in so that you didn't have to watch me struggle with the tape this time. Filled it with water that I pre-mixed with flower food, and then I'm ready to flower. Now, when you're a bud, oh, this is kind of fun. I'm going to cannibalize this. This was an arrangement that I made just to have a prop in another video I was doing. Uh, and you'll see that later. It's not now, but it's coming up down the pike somewhere whenever it gets edited and ready to go. So you can giggle and say, well, I saw it on the live stream. 
after it was the prop and now I'm going to rip it apart and cannibalize it and use it again and then add in some other fun flowers too but so you can say I saw that first before the video was even edited it's still just in raw format right now mm. that is good coffee I wish I could get you all a cup of coffee hot or cold we'd love to sit down and just have coffee with you but We'll do it virtually, so I hope you have your beverage of choice. I have coffee because I'm still working. But we'll enjoy it together and um, have fun with it. So I'm going to do Basic Foil Design 101. So this would be when you're just getting started and you're trying to figure out who you are, what you are. And my first bit of advice when you're in that bud stage is to start finding your niche. What makes you special? What's going to be unique about you? Why are people going to want to buy flowers from you as opposed to the person down the street? And those are things you have to think about. You've got to make that decision. Who are you? What are you? What makes you unique? What niche do you want to fill? And how are you going to do that? And a lot of people are like, they'll tell me, oh, but I don't know, and I don't know where to begin, and I'm not sure what a niche is, and how do I even do this? And I'll share with you a quote that resonated with me. Uh, it was from a book I was reading called Big Magic. You may be familiar with it. It's an older book. Um, but Big Magic had a quote, and it was just very simple. You imitate until you innovate because how do you be innovative and creative if you don't even know where to begin so you imitate until you innovate so when you're getting started and you're thinking oh what do I want to do how do I want to do this and you've done your research maybe you've followed people on social media you've looked at websites you've gone visiting and window shopping at different stores to get ideas and you find the things that you like. You find the things you would like to imitate. And if you start at that point with imitating what you like, then through natural evolution, you'll move forward into the stage of innovation. And that's how you get started finding your niche. Now, in this, if you take Basic Floral Design 1 with me at the very beginning, virtually the first day of class, we start you with a round arrangement. And then we also show you how you evolve that to an oblong arrangement. Now as we do it in class, this isn't how we do it. We aren't using this vessel. We aren't using these flowers. We're going to be doing something seasonally correct to your class. So like those of you that are starting with us on September 12th, um, we'll be using some autumn materials because it's the transition of seasons, which is pretty exciting. And you'll create a centerpiece, well actually you'll create a round arrangement using autumn materials, but the things you learn, you can then translate so that as you evolve and you go, hmm, what am I going to be when I grow up? You may say, gee, I don't like autumn colors. I want to work with all green and white. Maybe you want to be all very sophisticated and do nothing but green and white. You can do that. You can go there. He told me, what have you got there? I see a hand going up, so there must be a question. Well, John from Facebook is asking, what's that foliage that you were using? Oh, well, John from Facebook, what am I using here? I should have told you guys that, didn't I? I've been so concentrated on making sure I talk to you about being a creative entrepreneur, I forgot to talk to you about what flowers I have here. The rose is called Minta, M-E-N-T-A, and it's a beautiful, subtle rose that kind of goes to lavender and then kind of goes to pink and kind of goes to mauve and kind of goes to 
almost an ivory blush. It's a very transitional hue, which I love. And then this one was a local grown product that I got just yesterday at our growers market. And it is a type of sage, which is in the salvia family. So it's a type of sage. And then this last item that I'm putting in is actually grown by one of our flower farmer graduates. Yeah, a lot of our students come for different reasons. And this one uh, wanted to combine farming with flowering. And so Jeremy from Pollinate was selling it. And it's actually, who knows, maybe I'll give you a second to guess. Guess, 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 guess. Somebody guess. Okay, if you didn't guess, I will tell you. It's actually catnip. Yeah, catnip. So if I had a cat here in the studio, we'd probably have some really crazy yowling going on as they were trying to get to the catnip. Now I'm gonna stick in um, some red spray roses. I don't know the specific variety on this one. Um, the package wasn't labeled, it was just red spray rose. Uh, so that's what we're gonna call it, red spray rose. And when you are um, in the bud stage, of your career, oftentimes you don't know the names and you have to work a little harder to learn them. And I have found at the bud stage, one thing that helps is to have a good app on your phone uh, that has a plant ID app. And I know that's something we talk about in the classroom is how to use an app to take a photo and then figure out what product is you're looking at. And it really does help uh, as you're going along. So now, Got things started in here. I think I'm going to add a little bit of the calcinia. It gives that linear look, which will elongate a little more, and it's dyed into this hot pink color so that it adds a little bit of brightness and a transition between the muted and the very intense, so I get a little bit of variety there. So, Carolyn, or he told me, what else is going on out there? Well, Rick says that he was lucky enough to find a career in flowers and can honestly say that what they say is true. If you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. You know, Rick, it's so true. And David and I, my husband and I, always joke that we work all of the time and we work none of the time because what we do is so fun. And we always have pledged to each other when we quit having fun, we're going to stop. But I'm still having fun, so obviously I'm not stopping. And the joy of being a creative entrepreneur, and this is one of the huge benefits at bud stage, bloom stage, or seed stage, is you get to set the rules. You get to make the decisions. You are in charge. And if you feel like you want to take a day off, schedule it. Do so. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But um, you really want to do that. Now, as you're in, in your bud stage, I talked about you know creating a niche, finding what that is. And to get started, imitate. Imitate until you can get to the stage of innovate. And then set yourself deadlines. Put it on a schedule. Don't just go at it randomly. Be a little bit aggressive with yourself and set deadlines that, okay, by 90 days, I'm going to be doing five orders a week. I don't know what your level is going to be. I'm going to be doing one wedding a month. I'm going to be meeting potential customers twice a week. You know, what is your goal? Set standards and put together a timeline and a pledge to yourself because you're investing in yourself. Maybe it is by 120 days, I'm going to improve my skills in handwork and so you sign up for an extra class on flowers to wear so that you get stronger handwork skills and like flowers to wear is a, a new online class that we wrote that it goes through everything from classic with just flowers to pin on to 
the whole head adornment and collars and um, wearables, all of it's included in there. And so set yourself goals so that as you're a bud, you don't just stagnate because that's one of the things that's kind of hard when you're first starting is trying to make sure that you don't get to the point where you back yourself into a corner and, and you give up. Now, as you're doing this as a bud and you're finding your niche, you may decide that one of the things you want to do is always show flowers that are a little bit more luxurious, a little bit different. So maybe you pledge that every single arrangement you make is going to have orchids in it, or even an orchid, and that you are going to put that as sort of a badge of your brand, that every time you sell flowers, they, the customer knows they're gonna get an orchid. So I'm going to go back here and add in some bidiums, which I just cut the stem, take a water tube, cut it, slide in, and then place it. So while I do this for a bit, Carolyn, what's going on in your world? Yes, no Noel has a question on mechanics. What kind of netting are you using and what kind of tape to secure it to the vessel? Aha. See, and those are the things we teach in basic floral design, so you're just going to have to wait and join us there. No. Yes, we teach it in basic floral design, but I can also teach it right here and now. The netting I used is called floral netting. Um, slang is chicken wire, but it actually is not truly chicken wire. Chicken wire is not um, coated so that it, it would rust. You know, most chicken wire is silver. Floral netting is green. Uh, it has been coated so that it doesn't rust, which then would shorten the life of your flowers. And then I anchored in place using green waterproof tape. If you were a florist back in the old days, way back, it was called Davy Tape because that was the brand. But now if you said Davy Tape to most people, they would think, what are you talking about? Um, but it is uh, a waterproof tape, um, kind of similar to duct tape. It's that kind of a, a, a fabric. Um, but it allows you to anchor things in place and it doesn't weaken if you put it in the flower cooler where it gets cold and it doesn't, once it's adhered, um, it won't stop bonding when it gets wet. Now, as I place my orchids, those of you that have taken classes with me, you can see I'm facing them into each other um, because you want the throats to face each other like they're talking because I always tell students, orchids are social creatures, make sure they have a friend to talk to. And so I'm sliding them in here with all their faces kind of coming close together so that they are chatting. And it also draws the eye into your focal emphasis. So I'm using the elements and principles as I work. Now, is your gig gonna be that you add orchids to everything? Maybe. Maybe that becomes your niche, your style. But you as a bud need to start thinking about that. And then expand your skills, keep going, find your niche, and then start sharing it on social media. Because that's how you start growing your business, is by sending that message out. Now, once you're at that stage where it's time to grow your business, you become a bloom. You've moved past that bud stage and you are a bloom now. Then you've got to think about different things. The importance changes. And I have a little surprise with this me with me today to share with you. I'm so excited. This is it's been a while since we've been able to do this. Thank you, COVID. Um, but today to help us discuss how to be a bloom and the steps you need to take there, Teacher Carolyn's going to join me. So come on up, yay! I love it. It's been a while since I've seen you. Okay, Hi, it's 
so good to see you all it's her, it's virtually. Her. <laughs> I know. It's so great to have you back. I know. Don't you feel that way? I do. Oh, I missed gosh. you guys. Even though I see you every week online, I miss you guys. I know. It's been so hard to not actually have two of us up here. I mean, if you go back to our old live streams, so many times, there's two of us. I know. We haven't done this in a long time. <laughs> I think it's been three years, at least. I know. Yes. It's like, oh my gosh. So... I asked her to come up here and join me because some of you know that teacher Carolyn works in the classroom. She also works online, okay? But she also works with teacher Jerry at Bella Bloom Florals doing weddings. And mm -hmm. you guys are crazy busy. <laughs> crazy busy. <laughs> <laughs> and last year you were sharing with me that it was just burnout city. Oh, l last year was absolutely crazy. We were back-to-back -back weekends, and sometimes I was working multiple seven-day-a-week work weeks between there and here, and no end in sight. And we were so burned out come the end of the season. Our season went till late November, and then we really <sighs> didn't. Then we really didn't slow down because we had parties and we had everything else. Um, so it was insane. So this year, Jerry devised a plan where she blocked out two separate weekends this month where we booked no weddings, nothing. And so Excellent. I'm excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, let's let you grab your stuff. I'm going to move this one aside. You know, it's interesting. That's the number one tip that I would share if you are a bloom is to set aside time that is dedicated to self-care to you so like you mm -hmm. guys blocked mm -hmm. out i know and i have to share this because i and i asked her if i have permission <laughs> but so it's blocked out that there's no weddings this weekend so guess who's flying out of town tomorrow at oh dark 30 yeah. oh dark 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 30. <laughs> actually i think yeah you're it's gonna be crazy it's way early she is okay let's show her some love She's a grandma to be. Yeah. Her very first. My baby girl's having a baby in December. I'm so excited. So she's going down <laughs> to be a grandma at at this point. But how cool is that? And she can because she's a creative entrepreneur who has blocked time out and said, no, self-care, me first, which then mm -hmm. allows you to come back next week yep. and do weddings again. And do weddings again and then... Maybe get some time off in December and go really play grandma. <laughs> I love it. I know. In fact, she's already said, can I work off site in December? I want to go work with the baby. And I'm like, yes, I think that's a great idea. So that's pretty grand. So let's get you started. I'll just kind of sit here and drink coffee while you tell us what you're doing. Well, I thought I would do kind of a Bespo-ish table center for a wedding or for some kind of event. Um, I've chosen to do foam and the reason I chose to do foam rather than floral netting is because this dish is somewhat shallow and can be a little more difficult to use floral netting um, and then foam also travels better. It's so much easier to deliver. Um, especially in a shallow bowl. If it's a taller container like this and you've got floral netting, it doesn't slosh around as much. It's this shallow bowl. And then if I were doing this for event work and I were doing, say, 24 of these, I'd probably use um, like a dollar store dish or mm -hmm. something to tape everything into, and then I can pull it out and just drop it in. Easier transport, because these can go all in a tote, and these can just line up in a, a floral flat. And then I've taped it with clear tape and the reason why I've chosen clear is because I've taped all the way around as well and I don't see that green tape and I don't have to worry so much about covering my mechanics. Good move. Now again, back to basic floral design. That's one. right. See, that's why you join us for flower school. Yeah. And then you can score your corners or something I kind of found out myself this last week when we were doing a gajillion weddings is I just kind of compacted it with my hand and it rounded out nicely. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, we've got to keep scoring corners. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll, I'll score my corners. I love that it. was the cheater's way of scoring, my, scoring corners. Brilliant. Oh my gosh. So he told me what's going on over there. Well, everyone's saying congratulations, Caroline. 
Thank you. Noelle said it's important to prevent barn time by taking some time out. Yeah, timeouts are so, so good. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges when you're at the bloom stage, because when you're in a bud, you're so eager for every single thing you possibly can get, and you need it because you're just getting started, and then you become a bloom, and all of a sudden you're so busy that you can hardly see straight. And so taking that time to block out days is really a necessity. Um, David and I called them blue dot days because when we first reached that stage of overwhelm, we said, okay, stop get the calendar and we're going to figure it out and it was pre-digital and mm -hmm. at the time remember those dots that you get at the yeah. office supply <laughs> stores those colored dots well we happened to have some blue colored dots for some reason i don't know why and we actually got a physical calendar and we went through and we put these blue dots on the days that no school no classes no nothing you can't talk to us we are on a blue dot day and to this day i so call it blue dots, even though we don't have a blue dot calendar any longer, but um, I still say, okay, where are blue dot days? It's important. <laughs> okay, yes, so we got days eucalyptus. Off. Yes, we've got our feather eucalyptus, and silver, silver dollar dog. eucalyptus, and I'm just kind of running in and building somewhat of a base and some line, coming in a little bit lower with some of this Israeli ruscus. And he told me. Question from Julie on Facebook. Um, does the tape remove the spray color when you remove the tape from your... It can. Person? Yes, it can. If it's... I think this dish is probably a dish where the color it doesn't come off. Um, but if you have... Some of that mercury glass. Mercury glass, it yes. Off. That's so what bad. I was trying to think yeah. of. Mercury glass, yes, it does. Um, what I have done in the past, there is a clear glaze, Dresden clear glaze, mm -hmm. and I've sprayed my mercury glass on the outside with that Dresden clear glaze to help yeah. help it not um, That has off. worked well, that and the liner system like you were talking mm -hmm. about, and then mm -hmm. you just set it in and you're not taping to the dish, so there's yeah. two ways of doing it. So yes, if I were do if I were doing this for event work, I wouldn't be taping directly to the container. If it was a one-off, I might. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're renting on the vessel, you want to make sure you get it back mm -hmm. in good condition. Yeah. You know, it's funny that um, you and Jerry blocked out the weekends to make sure that you had sanity time. Mm -hmm. uh, Teacher Michelle does the same thing. She, every year, and about January, well, more towards February, hands me a list that's like, this week I'm gone, this week I'm gone. She looks at the school calendar, checks out our class schedule, and then she sees, oh, there's a break here, oh, there's a break here, and she just turns it out. She plans basically the entire year and like this week, I knew in January she was going to be gone. And it makes it easy for us as a full team to adapt because we know, okay, so Michelle's gone. So, ooh, Carolyn, can you be here? Or, gee, Carolyn's gone. So, Michelle, can you do this? And as a team, that sure makes it nice. And we all just kind of mm -hmm. do that. But you've got to step up and do it. <laughs> Or to schedule time, um, Jerry and I are going to go in November to Las Vegas to, con to continue our education in kind of the uh, business world of weddings. So we've scheduled out and blocked that time off. So that's something else to think of. Um, scheduling, scheduling your education. Mm -hmm. yeah. And scheduling oh time off from kind of daily stuff to get caught up in paperwork. Oh my gosh, there is that. <laughs> I know. And it, you know, as a bloom, you're always surprised at how much time it takes just to get through each day to get the orders done. And so if you don't schedule a business day, a work day to get paperwork done, it piles up and it can be overwhelming. For me, Monday has always been paperwork day. It just makes it easier because I don't want to do it at the end of the week when I'm getting ready for date night and the weekend. 
but um, Monday was always kind of my bookkeeping day. And then Tuesday would be a transition day because bookkeeping and creativity don't always mesh. Then Wednesday was live day and it's a creative day. And Thursday is a creative day. And then if you did everything right, Friday is a play day. <laughs> Sometimes. Oh, look. Well, Unless not you're in doing your world. Weddings. Yeah, not in your world. Oh, look at these artichokes. Are Aren't they not amazing? the best? Oh. When I found those at the market, I was like, we have to have those. I was glad when you said you wanted to use those. I was like, oh, yes, you do want to use those. They're all twisted together. And if I pull them all out at once, they all come. <laughs> and they're kind of sticky. They make and your they hands. Are sticky. Don't touch your mouth afterwards. They make your hands <laughs> taste horrid. I or my they. eyes. <laughs> and they hurt your eyes. Yeah. So look careful at, out there. Look at those. Oh, my goodness. These just are so much fun. Let's see. I think I'm going to tuck these in to my base. I've kind of established a little bit of a line here, a triangular um, form here with the snapdragons. And then I'm going to place this guy here. And you then... haven't lost your backwards designing skills. <laughs> And then I'm going to place this one kind of directly behind. What's that called, guys, when you place something directly behind of the same material? Ooh, now we're going into advanced yeah. floral design. Oh, my I know gosh. there's some advanced designers out there, advanced graduates out there. So who <laughs> knows the answer? What happens if you place something directly behind? Get your answer in there. It's a test, like flower school test. You know, as you're working, other tips that you could utilize as a bloom, go back to what I said as a bud, where you need to function on social media so that people know you exist. Make sure you keep mm -hmm. promoting yourself that way. But at some point, you've promoted yourself and you've grown and you're fabulous. And you've got to do a couple more things. So before I go there, let's see. He told me, do we have any questions out there that well, I need to do? Everyone's asking, is that technique called shadowing? Yes. Good so job. Shadowing it is. We got the answer. Excellent. Ding, 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 ding. Winner, winner. <laughs> so if you are a bloom and you've gotten busy, Teacher Carolyn recommended scheduling time for education, scheduling time for self-care, scheduling time for book work. So working on your schedule and really putting it in there and following it. And then, oh, there's the mailman. There's always a ding, ding, ding bell. So they run out to answer the door. Um, other things that you can do when you're getting too busy is start thinking about what things you really like the most and limit your offerings to that. So when somebody asks you to do something that isn't really your world, say no. Find out where you're gonna send them. But if it's not the thing that floats your boat, why do it? If it makes you crazy and it takes you away from things. So limiting how you offer. Oh my gosh, these roses are exquisite. These are garden roses, local grown here in Oregon. And they're really mean too, look oh. at that. <laughs> oh, be careful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So with Bespo, um, I'm not going crazy wild Bespo, but you want a lot of space. You want a lot of air within between your flowers so the eye just travels beautifully through the design so I group some roses here and I brought one over to this side so your eye travels from one side of the um, arrangement back to the other side and kind of did a little fun thing over here and let's see I'm going to turn this Well, you can see it from all sides. I can see it from all sides. And I'm going to turn that rose so its face is looking out because it was looking backwards and it wasn't facing right. See, I love it when you're here designing because I get to drink more coffee. 
<laughs> this is really perfect. And I want to turn that so it's facing in the proper direction. I love it. And then I think I'll take one more of these gorgeous roses. These remind me of sterling. They do have a little bit of that lavender that to them, but their stem is so much straighter and stronger. Mm -hmm than the old sterling, but yes, the color is very similar. So I just brought that to the back there. And then I think I will add a couple spray roses. While you're and hunting up things, he told me he's got another note too. Yeah, Diane from Facebook is asking, do you ever wear gloves to deal with those rose thorns? No. <laughs> yes. I'll use a towel and I'll use um, I'm bad. I like rose strippers. <laughs> but I, I typically use a towel. Um, and then, yeah, most, mostly, yes, I'll use a towel. Yeah, it's interesting because thorns can be so deadly. Um, and in arrangements and such, you don't really have to worry about removing them, but when it goes into a bouquet, then you do have to have mm -hmm. them removed, and if it's going into a bridal bouquet, using a stripper is not the worst thing. Going into an arrangement that needs to last a week, then yeah. the gloves or a towel work better. Ricky, what's going on in your world? Yeah, um, Heidi over on YouTube is curious about the longevity of the artichokes in the arrangement compared to the flowers. I've had artichokes last a really long time. I think they last longer than, yeah. in fact, they dry really well. Yeah, they'll hold quite well. The, um, this top floor, floral portion right up here will start to shrivel and get a more intense eggplant hue, but it's still lovely. So they hold quite well and then it will totally dry. So it makes it to be a more eco-sustainable item because you can pull it out and use it as a dried item as opposed to discarding it. Mm -hmm. And then if you spray it with mm -hmm. hairspray, fuck with it, <laughs> um, they'll, they'll really hold well. Yeah, they, they spray well and they, um, once it's totally dry, you could even gild it uh, so it's golden or maybe you want it to be a silver and they take color really well and give you that great texture and form. So it's a good one, definitely. So now I've just added some spray roses to fill in and now... Look at those. The allium were so cool. They were just little short baby guys. Again, a local grower. So, so cute. Sure baby allium. And look at that scabiosa. Isn't that amazing? So this scabiosa is a little bit longer. And I can have that extend out this way. The local farmers had so much beautiful product this week. I was just thrilled to death. So while you're poking those, you tell me what else is going on. Um, Noelle from Facebook is asking if those rose strippers hurt the stem or does it just take off the sharp tip of the thorns? Typically, if you use a rose stripper, you do have to be very careful. Ideally, best practice is to use rose gloves. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, there's that toss up of speed and efficiency and longevity. Uh, and so with Carolyn, when she's working on wedding work, it's for the moment. And so speed and speed is the number one thing. Just get it done. And so the stripper is fabulous. For someone doing weeklies or um, flowers that are going to the home where they need to be enjoyed for a number of days, then it does scar the side and it um, interferes with the ability for the rose to drink and so it will shorten the life on that respect. So you want to really analyze what it is you're doing and how you're doing it. it goes back to your niche. If you're in the wedding niche, you're different than if you're in the corporate niche. If you're in the wedding niche, you're different than if you're doing flowers for birthdays and anniversaries. Uh, and when we teach in class, we present all the different options and all the different techniques so that they knew determine which options, which techniques work best for you based on what your business model is. 
Oh my gosh, I, I'm thinking that one might have mm -hmm. to go home with me. I'm loving this. Like, oh my goodness. Oh, that's exquisite. What do you guys think? Should we show Carolyn some love? Give her some hearts? Now, if you know somebody who is trying to figure out where they fit in this business world and being a creative entrepreneur, tag them. Share this video out. Help us spread the word because we want everybody to see Carolyn's talents here. I think of all of us, you are the best at Best Buy. <laughs> and you didn't even know you were going to be on live today until about an hour ago. No. <laughs> and look, I mean, I just said, oh, Carolyn, you can tell me no, but I would love it if you would join us and do this. And she's like, okay. <laughs> Winner. <laughs> so we all win. So now, something like this. Let's say you're a bloom. Mm -hmm. You've been working. You've learned to take time for you. You've limited what you do so that you're only doing what you like. Mm -hmm. And I know we had this conversation today. The third way is to think about pricing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you are just having that discussion as to do we raise our prices? Right. Yeah. Do we raise our prices for wedding for for the kinds of weddings what we deliver? Because uh, right now we have a base price. Um, but we're averaging, you know, three to four, three to five weddings a weekend. Some are pickups, some um, are just drops, where we just go drop everything, no setup, nothing. But then there's, you know, two to three that are full setups That's and a strikes. Lot. Yeah, <laughs> that is a lot. So, you know, we have to think about what what we really want to do, what makes us the most happy. One wedding a week, one or two weddings a weekend would make us the most happy. But is it profitable? Yeah. And to make it profitable, we have to raise those prices. Yeah. So it's like trying to weigh out what to do. Right. <laughs> because you don't want to go so high you have no business. Right. But you right. want to go high enough that you've got the profit you mm -hmm. need mm -hmm. and the amount of work that you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, with COVID and having to kind of rework our, the business, we've added dailies. Changes the whole dynamic. Which changes everything. And then when you get into a five wedding weekend, and plus parties and anything else that have pushed in, it gets crazy. So we have to think about saying no to those dailies and just, and any any new party or any new wedding that might come in, we have to say, no, we're at capacity. Because if we said yes, it would just send us directly over the edge. Yeah. Learning so. to say no is so mm -hmm. important. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for well, joining you. us and doing this. I'm going to let you take one, that okay. one that way, because I've already right. put this one this way, and we'll do one more. But thanks awesome. for being here. So, so good seeing you face to face. Give her some love. <laughs> Give her some love. We gotta do that because she joined us. It's so great. Don't you love it? it makes me so happy. So as a bloom, just to review, save time for you, schedule it. Save time for education, schedule it. Save time for paperwork, schedule it. And then think about how much you can really do and start raising your prices so that you lose that low end and start saying no when it's something you really shouldn't do because it takes the joy out. And by scheduling it and doing these things, it allows you to keep the enthusiasm and the, the fun. It keeps you growing and learning. And it just makes everything better. Then at some point, you're going to become a seed. You know, you're a bud, and then you bloom and you grow, and then all of a sudden you've bloomed out, and you cross that line and, and you become a seed, and you're like, what does that mean? How do I function, and what do I do as a seed? And you want to think about what can you give back? What can you do to give yourself personal satisfaction and help the world and help the next generation? And so when you go to seed, you're looking at it from so many different angles. So maybe you want to 
do a little bit of teaching and sharing and, and letting the, the newbies know some of the things that you've learned over the years that you go, well, yeah, I, I, I've been there, done that, I know that, and this is what you need to do. You need to schedule time for yourself. And you start sharing that knowledge that you've built up. And then you start thinking about what do I do to keep myself happy and motivated? And maybe at the point that you become a seed, it's important to go back and think about being a bud again in a different way. How do you want to reinvent yourself so that you don't give up and burn up, but instead you keep joy in your life. And finally, I get to say, it's been so long and I haven't been able to say because it wasn't publicly announced, but finally I can tell you, many of you have reached out and said, where's Teacher Marisa? What's going on with Teacher Marisa? We miss Teacher Marisa. And I would have to say, we miss Teacher Marisa too, but she's taking time to nurture her creative soul, and she's stepping back and saying, taking care of herself. She took time to be self-care, and we all just had to sort of wait it out because self-care comes first, and now she's announced, and you're gonna love this, she's becoming a bud again. Yeah, so she went from bud to bloom to seed, and she's a bud again. She's been accepted, into the Sushi, Sushi Chef Institute. Yeah, she's going to sushi school, plus the added bonus. It's in California near where her mom is, so she gets to go spend some time with her mom, which I know that's been something she's missed because her mom and she are so close. So we're all ecstatic for her. We're just thrilled because she's gone full cycle and finding joy and keeping it in her life, and she's a bud again. So let's all wish her the best. So give her some love, because I know she'll probably see this, and she may be watching right now, who knows. But let's give Marisa some love, because she is staying true to herself and searching out her own personal joy. And think about it, food and flowers, sushi and flowers. It doesn't get any better than that. I think she's got something on it. So I'm going to do one more as we talk about the seed and what next. And when you are at seed stage, your head is just exploding with all that knowledge. And you have to give it back out. You have to move forward with it somehow or another. And it's just almost overwhelming how much is in your head. And it's, it is overwhelming, I'll be honest, because it's like every day it's just exploding with more and more and more. And I thought, well, how fun would it be just to do a head that is exploding and going through the phases. So we have the bloom and we have a bud. Didn't have a seed. But we have the phases of growth here from the smallest bud to blooming to blooming out. So it represents that bud bloom seed movement in your brain and a creative entrepreneur can do this at all levels and let's back up again you know last week we explained what is the creative entrepreneur the creative entrepreneur makes their living earns their income by their creative skills that's who you are you can make your living you can support yourself utilizing your creative skills. Now, if you don't do it well, you could go broke. We've all seen that too. And you could starve. You could be a starving artist. And that's what we don't want to see. I do not want starving artists out there. We want successful creative entrepreneurs. And that's why every single class we teach, we focus on pricing, we focus on technique, and we show you all the options and really insist that you understand how to do it profitably. 
so that you don't end up being a starving artist. I mean, that's not a lot of fun. Being a starving artist, like, oh no, been there, done that. No, 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 no. You want to be a successful artist, a creative entrepreneur who does make a living and does do it well. And that's where it's vitally important that you understand the medium, flowers. You've got to understand that. But you also have to understand the industry and best practices for pricing, care and handling, how to get the most for your money. You, know, you really have to think about all these things as you're going along so that you don't become a starving artist. Now, while I gather a couple more things, he told me, Carolyn, Ricky, is there anything out there that I need to be answering? Well, Terry from Facebook is asking um, if you ever talk about flower waste or green waste. I see so much waste at flower shops on the floor that wastes money being thrown in the carpet. Oh my gosh, great question. Um, what about waste? And, you know, it is almost criminal when I see people that don't take care of their product so that it ends up on the floor and it isn't then utilized and loved by someone. And yes, in fact, oh my gosh, I can't remember her name, but a student of ours and she had the perfect term for it. She was always talking about the bits and um, she was British and so she said it in an accent too, the bits. and. Um, she would always have a little vase at her table that she would put any of the little oddities, the bits that were left over, and then use them later in something else so that they didn't go to waste. And so now that's something we do in the classroom too, is we have a little vase for bits at each student station so that you do save those. And then we talk about ways to use them to give you full value. Because anytime you see something in the garbage, that's your money. That's your paycheck. That's your profit. That's bad if it's in the garbage as opposed to money in your pocket. You want it in your pocket. You want it to be paying you. So yes, we do talk about how best to make sure that you actually get value from everything that you buy and that you use that value well for your clients rather than having it go to waste. Um, so definitely, that is something we all have to be conscious of all the time because if you're not, you're not being a responsible citizen. And I know that sounds kind of Pollyanna-ish, but you have a responsibility to take care of the product, to take care of your clients, and to take care of yourself. And if you skip any one of those, you're doing a disservice to the industry. Uh, and that, that makes me sad. So yes, that is something that is part of our program, as to how best utilize things and how best to be responsible citizens because I don't care who sells flowers, I don't care how you sell flowers, I don't care where you sell flowers, I care that you sell flowers responsibly and profitably. That's all. If you're profitable and you're responsible, then you're doing it right. That's all that matters. Anything else is choices. And you can have as many choices as you want. You get to choose. Now I thought, wasn't that fun just to bring it out the back, almost like a mane and everything just flowing out. And then maybe put a little bit more in the front here to add some softness. Uh, what do I want to use? Hmm, uh, maybe a little bit of the calcinia that isn't dyed because it could almost be like it's the bangs coming forward, a little bit of hair around the face, such as that. You know, as a creative entrepreneur, we've just barely tapped the surface. 
we have more time in the classroom, obviously, to discuss options and such. And online, you can work with your teachers there as well, exploring the different ways to enter the marketplace. Um, live streams will continue to address this and think about what different ways you can be a successful creative entrepreneur. As you think of questions, don't hesitate. Reach out. That's what we're here for. And as you are entering the marketplace, just to remember that there are steps that you can take to do it well. So then, any more questions? I've got just a couple more minutes. He told me. Yeah, Bria from Facebook is asking. She just she's just starting out. What is the best way to estimate how much product you need for different arrangements to avoid waste of money and product? What is the best way to estimate how much product you need and then avoid waste? And it's, it's, it's hard, but it's actually very simple. You need to recipe everything out. That's really what it comes down to. You need to recipe it out, which when you're first beginning, it's hard. And so then you look at other people's pictures and you make recipes from that and that helps you get started. Um, when you're in the online course, we have recipes included with everything that we teach so that that's kind of a starting point for you to determine what flowers you would need because you know, well, this is the recipe they used, so if I'm doing it this way, at least I know there's a starting point. And then as you are beginning, you're still going to screw up sometimes. You're going to need to buy incorrectly. And at that point, have a backup plan as to what are you going to do with that product that's left over rather than let it go to waste. Use it to market yourself. What business might you deliver it to so that they have flowers to think about you and consider buying from you in the future? Um, where can you take these things? Don't, don't just throw it away. Use it to market yourself. So then it's an investment back in yourself again, and it's not wasted. So it's really important to always have these plans in place. Now, as you're thinking and you're making your plans, don't forget, as a creative entrepreneur, you're in charge. You are in charge. You set the rules. Are you going to work in floral netting? Are you going to brand yourself with orchids? Are you going to be a little avant-garde and do funkier things that are just kind of edgy? Are you going to think about deliverability and using foam, but in a more up-to-date contemporary style? You get to choose. Here at Flow Design Institute, our goal is to show you all these techniques in class, which all of this is taught in Basic Floral Design 101. I mean, this is just where we start. And shadowing is in advanced design, so I guess it's not all basic. So shadowing is an advanced concept, but you get to choose which style is you. You're in charge. Then you get to decide how hard you want to work. You get to decide when you're going to work. You get to decide what days you're going to work. You get to decide if you're going to work in your pajamas. You get to decide if you want to wear overalls. You get to decide what gives you joy and makes you happy. What career goals do you have? Because as a creative entrepreneur, you have the power over you. And that's the only thing you can control is you. You can't control anybody else. So if you focus on you, then you can build the career you dream of. So go back. If you missed Creative Entrepreneur Livestream 1, review it because that's where we talk about your preparation, your research, getting it real. And then if you missed the first of this, go back and watch the whole thing because now we're giving you the steps to go from starting Creative Entrepreneur 1 to the bud, to the bloom, to the seed, full cycle all the way through. And the key 
is to remember it's all about you. That's really where it starts. And the only way it can start well is to have a strong foundation, period. That's really what it comes down to. Get a strong foundation, learn everything you possibly can. So join us for flower school. You know, that's my message every day. Join us for flower school. Come do something you love with me. Because that's what I love. And I would love to share that with you. For now, I'm going to say goodbye. We'll be back next week. We've got more fun planned, promise you. And then we're getting ready to start flower school up. September 12th is the first day in person. And online is going crazy right now because everybody's going, oh my gosh, my garden's blooming. I better start flower school so I can use my flowers. And we're ready for you. So if that's something you're thinking about, go ahead. Enroll today. And for now, I'm going to get out and go do something I love. And I'll see you all next week. Bye for now. Oh,